Welcome back. So the next thing I want to improve my DOM helper right here is I'm going to try and figure out a way to kind of count. It seems there's a lot of places I'm counting how many elements I'm using. So I'm going to make some kind of method that can just count how many elements and all I want to pass in is just the element type that I want to count for. So I'm just going to copy this for now and move down to my DOM helper down here. And I'm going to make a new method. I'm just going to call it count. Very simple name. And I'm going to again send in a tag name like this. It's going to be a string. And in the end right here, the string is going to return, the method is going to return just a number like this. Now, the method itself is pretty simple. I just want to kind of go in and say, I want to use the tag name to find all query for all types of elements with this tag name right here. And let's just call it elements right here. And then the final thing I want to do is I just want to return like this. I just want to return the length of those elements. I don't care about this part. So that's pretty much just my method right here. So just go in and count how many I have of a specific element type. And again, because the fixture is local inside this class right here, I have to do this, that fixture. So now that we have the count method, let's try and go and use it in our code. So let's go back up here and say we expect, instead of this, we are going to try and use the dh right here, our DOM helper right here and say count. And the tag name is of course the button, right? So I'm going to pass in the button like this, and that's going to give me a number. And you can actually, instead of say to be truly, we can actually use a way to work with numbers to be greater than or equal to one. That was pretty much the same thing that the code asked me. So look at this, now it's a one-liner and I can get rid of all of this like that. And there we go. Now we have a counter in our, in our helper right here as well. And we can start using that everywhere where we kind of count how many are available for a specific thing. We can start using this, this guy right here. So look at this one actually, that, that's another one. Here we're looking for a specific button and it's actually the first button, right? So how can we do that? Well, I can actually go and get single text right here, the one I just built. I can get that down here now and just add the button tag, right? Because now I'll get the first button. Oh my God, it's amazing. So getting rid of all of that noise. There we go, now that should work. Again, always just test your code. Uh, whenever you say something, make, make sure that you still right? The, the, the tests still run, right? So let's just go back. What else can we do? So here's some location. We'll skip that for now. We'll get back to that later. Here it seems we're looking for length again. So again, we're looking for the UL this time and say that should be one. Now we're going to do the same thing. So we're going to instead say dh.count and we're going to pass in UL this time. And hopefully that UL is going to be one. Let's just get rid of this again. There we go, we're using the counter. And here we have another one that says li instead. And I could keep going now, I don't wanna bore you guys with this. You can just go and check this out yourself. It's very simple now, but we just made another way to kind of shorten the amount of code that we need. Again, right here, it seems that we, we are getting a product right here and then we're detecting changes and then we should have this many list items. So again, we can just do the count right here. And seriously, you guys can do this. It's, it's very simple stuff and it, the code isn't even that hard to create, right? It's, it's easy to create it, but the cool thing is every time I make something, I can make sure that everything still runs in the tests and it's the same for your production code. Every time you make a change in your production code, if you refactor, just go and check the tests. If they're running, happy days. And that's actually how easy it is to, to already get value from our tests. And again, right here is another one. So notice how easy it is to me, for me to just start cutting down the amount of code that I need to kind of make this work right here. I can just keep going. So let me end it right here. I'll finish the rest so you guys don't have to sit and watch the same thing on and on again. And um, next lesson we'll come back and we'll have a look at something completely new. Have fun.